in the next section, we're going to look at, we're going to re-explore the compositor. And the compositor is really powerful, so I wanted an excuse to revisit it and see some of the other things it can do. Um, in order to use the compositor, the main input that it takes is your previous render. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and render out my image. So render, render image. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to as it renders is just how much longer this will take to render than um, the amount of time that it took before. And this is mainly because of the PBR material that we added, which is fairly large, but also definitely because of the procedural texture that we added. So it's always a cost trade-off. You can use the default materials and it can usually render very fast or you can use these more realistic textures and it'll just take a little bit longer to render, which can be a significant amount of overhead if you're trying to render an animation. But in this case, it's going to take, it took around 30 seconds, which isn't too bad. Now we can see what our image looks like. I really like how this looks. You can see that you have this dark, dark blue background. You can see some um, imperfections from the concrete material. One thing that I don't like is just how extreme this lens distortion is from the previous lesson. So that'll be one thing that I want to change. And also just this spot right here is just very empty. So we can add a little bit more details to that. Okay, so go ahead and press exit. Go to your compositing node right over here. So this is the compositing tab. It'll bring up your compositing nodes. And you'll remember this from the previous lecture. So if we want to be able to see what the compositor is seeing, first, go ahead and detach image right here and just reattach it. This will add in the render that we just finished adding. Now what you can do is Shift A, and we're going to add in a viewer. This will allow us to see what the compositor is seeing. Go ahead and plug in the lens distortion into the image. Now we can see it. Now, if you use your scroll wheel, it'll control how big these nodes are, but it doesn't control how big this image is in the background. So what we're going to do is add in a search scale node and drop that in right between the lens distortion and the viewer. Select it and change the size. I'm going to go about 0.4. And now, that, now you can see that we can see the full render completely. Now the first thing that I want to change is the amount of dispersion. It's just too much. So if I change this to something like 0 0.05, this should automatically update and you can see that it's much less distracting now that we have less. Now as I mentioned before, the render looks very nice. However, it's just a little too perfect. I would imagine if we're looking at a protein at this molecular level, you would see hydrogen floating around, which might look like dust particles. You might see some chromatic aberrations just because the thing that we're looking at is so small. And so we can add all of that using the compositor. So go ahead and press Shift A, search, and I want to add an image. Go ahead and drop that node. Now down here, you'll see this little folder button. Click on that, and inside the project files for this lesson, you'll see this dust.png. Go ahead and open that. Now this is the file that that is. It's just a bunch of little dust particles, some lens smudge, and some chromatic aberrations. So what we can do is we want to combine this with our rendered image. So I can press Shift, A. And I want to, first of all, I want to scale it because this image doesn't necessarily need to be the same resolution as what we just rendered. So we want to make the match. So I can take this image, plug it into the image socket, change relative to render size, and I can crop it. So if there's extra hanging off the edge, it'll just crop it off. Now I want to take this image and I want to mix it with the rendered image. So Shift, A, search, and just search for mix. So this is a mix node. And we can drop it right after the lens distortion between the scale. And you can see that it immediately turns our image white.
And the reason it's doing this is it's taking white right here, and it's mixing it with our rendered image with a factor of 100%. So it's just coming out 100% white. If we were to take the image from our lens dust, put it into the image socket, you'll see that now we can take a look at what our dust looks like, but it's still 100%, and we want this to be very subtle, difficult to notice. So I'm gonna change this maybe to 0.3. Now if we move that out of the way, you can see that we've got this lens, lens smudge up here, we've got some imperfections, these dust particles that could be hydrogens floating around in solution, and it just adds like a slightly less perfect quality, which makes it look a little bit more realistic. You can play around with how intense everything is, so I might try to um, maybe decrease the factor to 0.2 to make it even more subtle. You can see that it's maybe looks a little bit better. You can play around with that. So once you have the scene looking exactly how you want, there's one thing that you shouldn't forget, and that is the viewer, once it's hooked up to the viewer, we won't be able to see it when we render it out. So you have to reconnect the mix node back to our composite node. And if you were to leave it connected here, when you re-rendered the image, you would just see a completely black screen. So in, now that we've done that, we can go back to our layout, and we can do our final render. Do, to do that, go up to Render, and Render Image. You can watch the progress down here at the bottom, so 0%. It'll take a while to load in the materials, so a lot of the overhead here is gonna be loading in the PBR and the procedural material, but once that's loaded in, it should immediately jump to a 100%. While we're waiting for that, I just wanted to mention that course evaluations are now up, so if you found the class helpful and you wanna give some feedback for hopefully next IAP period, you can, um, um, I'd be really grateful if you added that in the course evaluation. I was thinking that it would be nice to do this Blender course each IAP period for you know, a, few more, a few more years. That way, if during this class you didn't quite get um, a complete mastery of Blender, you can always take it again next IAP. And each IAP will do a completely different scene, I'll, and I'll also include the newest updates as Blender changes and progresses pretty quickly. Okay, so our render is finished, and you can see that it looks a lot nicer, in my opinion, now that we have these imperfections and um, also all the realistic te textures. So I might feel more comfortable submitting this version compared to the other version to a journal that has a history of having realistic um, covers. And just to mention, with the covers, um, when you submit them, it's usually after you've finished the, uh, um, answering the reviewer's comments. There'll usually be an option of, would you like to include cover art with this? And so you can usually check, yes, I would like to include cover art, and then you'll usually just submit this image. So no need to add back in our cover template in Photoshop to this. You can just submit it exactly like this. The reason that I do the whole thing with the template is just because as I'm designing, this big empty sp place is all, always very unintuitive to me and I always feel this urge to want to fill it. But we know that it looks perfect with that big empty place there. So it can just help speed up the composing process. And also journals, they, they really appreciate it if you're able to keep this space at the top empty because they don't want all of this distracting noise obscuring the journal cover and also the journal information. So it's just something that can help give you an edge when submitting. But that's all I have for um, this lecture. I'm, I appreciate you all coming and look forward to seeing you next time.